And Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Ali Imran, وَعَصَيْتُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَرَاكُمْ مَا تُحِبُّونَ SubhanAllah, this is a rich tafsir. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala said, and you disobeyed after He gave you what you loved. After He gave you what you wanted. Allah provided for you exactly what you asked Him for. You made dua earnestly. You asked Allah for this, you asked Allah for that. Allah opened the doors of khair upon you. And you responded with disobedience. And of course, this is speaking about many Israel and in a specific concept, context, but it has a great meaning to it. And the ulama of tafsir, they reflect on this ayah. They say, al ba'd al-ni'mah ashaddu min al qabl al-ni'mah. To disobey Allah after He has given you something, after He's given you a blessing that you've been asking Him for or something that you love, is worse in His sight than when you disobey Him before He provides that thing for you. Not that sin is ever justified with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not that disobedience is ever not a problem because every disobedience is an act of ingratitude and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves all gratitude from us. Not that. But especially when Allah finds you in a state where He's giving you everything you're asking Him for and you're responding with things that He commanded you not to do. That makes it worse. And again, don't just think about Bani Israel. Think about yourself. So how do we bring this all together in a daily habit of muhasaba, in a daily habit of self-accountability? Shaykh Tahir Wa'ir Hafizullah Ta'ala, he shared with us the statement from an Imam al-Mawardi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, where he described al-muhasaba as the following. He said, أَنْ يَتَصَفَّحَ الْإِنسَانِ فِي اللَّيْلِ مَا صَدَرَ مِنْ أَفْعَارِ نَهَارِهِ That a person sits with himself at night and goes back and thinks about what they did during the day. A person sits with themselves at night and then goes back and thinks about what they did during the day. Because let me tell you something. A person who is not introspective can find a way to make everything, even kaba'ir, even major sins, not that big of a deal. Because if the shaitan is your mufti, you're led astray. You'll make everything Texts fly out the window. The most severe warnings of the Prophet ﷺ mean nothing to you if you are not that introspective person. And yes, we find this constant emphasis in the Qur'an and the Sunnah to have people around you to stoke that proper conscience when you're not thinking right. We have that concept of the jama'ah, we have that concept of the group, we have that concept of Ahl al-Dhikr of people of knowledge and people of remembrance that are meant to remind as well. We have all of that of surrounding yourself with good friends that will rub off on you and that will help your conscience be more alive. But at the end of the day, if you're not an introspective person, the most major sins will be justified away in your head. Now here's what I want you to think about. Pick up any book about living a, a faithful and a happy life. Pick up any book about gratitude. And they'll all tell you, you wake up in the morning, and if you wake up with that lens of gratitude, everything is going to be okay. Everything is great. When you wake up in the morning, you still have not accumulated the sins of the day. You still have not accumulated the sins of the day. So what I want you to do is when you wake up in the morning, just take two minutes, three minutes. And if you want to be good, five minutes. And sit there and count every ni'mah that you can think of for that morning. Wa in ta'udu ni'matullah. And if you start trying to count one blessing of Allah, you will not succeed. Just spend three to five minutes in the morning and think about every ni'mah that you have woken up to and say, Alhamdulillah, sincerely, gratefully from your heart, with full gratitude from your heart, Ya Allah, thank you for this. And then at night, dear brothers and sisters, when you lay down, spend three to five minutes and review every one of your conversations for the day. Review the backbiting. Review the slips of the tongue. Review the slips of the eye. Review the major and the minor, the public and the private. Review it all. Just spend a few moments and then put it in a bag of istighfar and send it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Rabbi khirli. Ya Allah, I fell short today in this regard, in that regard. Get specific with yourself because you're not going to become a self-aware person unless you get specific with yourself. Ya Rabb, at that lunch conversation, I feel like I slipped. I went a little bit too far when talking about that person. And what is the connection of this all? 
I said every single disobedience is an ingratitude. And Imam Al-Qayyim rahimahullah says, and every single sin is a misuse of one of Allah's blessings upon you. Every single sin is a misuse of a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah did not give you that tongue so you can backbite His creation. Allah did not give you that intelligence so you could scheme and deceive people. Allah did not give you those eyes so that you could look at the things He told you not to look at. Allah didn't give you that body so that you could use it in lust and sin. Allah gave you those blessings to use them for khair, to use them for good. How dare you use those blessings for sharr, for evil?